one for this exciting match of RNG MY versus RNG Esports. RNG on the blue side, Orange Esports on the red. This early game should fall more in towards Orange Esports' favor. They've got two winning lanes so far. Mid lane is going to be not contested too hard because Hawk can only do so much, but it's expected that Lolita looks to try and trade as soon as they hit level two. Oh, aim. A little bit of aggressive uh, harassment, so I'm a little bit surprised he actually trade off a lot of his health for this because if you think about it, it's just not worth it. This is an SS we're talking about that is going to be able to sustain the middle fight. Iris, however, taking a pretty bad trade against Neo, but he is going to be okay for now. But I feel like from Iris' perspective, it's all about dragging towards the middle stage of the game where he can potentially try and take a 1v1 fight against Neo, which I think it's very, very difficult still. Yeah, I still think Neo is going to dominate this lane. More so, I feel bad for Lolio. Oh, my, get oh my goodness. Here in lane. Yeah, look at that. He just cannot trade against Muddles and specifically Valance. You, you got to thank uh, Loli uh, You got to thank Hawk for this because if Hawk isn't in the pool, Lolio would have struggled way much more. However, he's still going to be forced to recall back once to save up Hawk's mana for the next upcoming engagement. Interesting enough, Hawk going for the Purify. Huh. I think it's good that he takes Purify. He knows for a fact that he could get CC down. Uh, oh, Iris, he shouldn't be here. He shouldn't be walking up to the wave. He wants to get that last bit of EXP, but still unable to claim it. Subway could look to punish. Yep. Emblems-wise, we do see a little bit of cooldown coming from Iris. He wants to go for those 1v1 chain taunts, but like I said as well, not a big fan of Concussive Blast. I'm still a big fan of Brave Smite for the, uh, for the tank emblem, but still... Oh well, all is good as long as the Estes is able to keep Iris in, in the fights while trying to set up for those big charges, then it's all well. But as of yet, RG, they're grouping up top. They want to try and force a fight. Neo, however, forced to back out. Turtle is still up for grabs, but Iris is looking for the catch. He gets the stun. I think he can go for the taunt, but the damage is a little bit too much. And he will respect it and back off. He's calling Hawk for help. Turtle comes in. Balance, however, on the bottom side, Cat's a bad trade, so the marksmen are still 50 50. Meanwhile, RG, they're losing a little bit of turtle control, but they get a nice hard. Here comes the heavy spin from Link Aza. They separate the fight, but Stormy, he also has a one himself. Iris goes for the big slam with the appraisal, but does not have enough damage to do so. Neo forced the flicker out, but RSG comes up on top with the turtle as well. Uh, a bit of hesitation coming in for the side of Orange Esports, and uh, I don't think the communication is as clean as we did see it yesterday. Balance is now in an awkward spot because Lolios getting that good trade uh, and once he hits level 4 is going to force Valance back. He's low on HP and as long as Lolios instantly... Wait, uh -oh. hold on. Hold on, Iris. What are you doing here? Does he have the chop? He doesn't have the appraisal but Neo, he gets cancelled with the Tion. He couldn't get the abyss of fight, but no! Oh! He gets the ultimate in time! He won me to this! Iris, you absolute chat! The hidden MVP reveals the dragon lying in the sleep. He played it perfectly. He cancels out the abyss strike. He waits for the right moment to actually drop his ult, and now the rest of RSG with that space and time is able to punish bot side once again, allowing Lolios to catch back up from these early trades against Valen so far. Mid lane, not a problem. Izanami just wants to stack. Oh, you hate to see this happening to Orange Esports, and now Valens is doing pretty okay, but Hawk is just making sure that Lolios has the most ideal farm as of yet. Stormy now has the heavy spin. He needs to go for the big catch. But it seems like RG and Y, they have a rough idea what Orange Esports is trying to do. So they will abandon their plan for now and try and set up for mid lane. But Stormy, he's shown himself, he knows they, they know that he's got the heavy spin. But that's pretty much it for Orange Esports. It's all about finding the right opportunity now. I mean, plays can't be made by Orange Esports, especially from AIM until he has that flicker. And unfortunately for Neo, dying that one time against Iris is going to put him a full level behind. So Iris now in full control over this lane as well as having that Molten Essence is going to put Neo at a significant disadvantage. He cannot just walk up and trade uh, haphazardly against Frederick. The pause comes on in. Ah, right. I mean, we wanted to see this game progress even more. I think the pause is pretty uh, uh, called right now. Uh, I, I'm not exactly sure what entirely was the issue, but I feel like this is a good time for Orange Esports to discuss how do we salvage this? Because if you think about it, they've just lost two very, very important members up top, especially against Frederick, which arguably the Diroff should be winning that lane matchup. So something must have went wrong. 
they need to find a way to fix it. I'm sorry, did we, did we just forget the double kill that happened up on top side? I mean, yeah, like, for, come for on. Orange Esports, they lost that double kill off top. Exactly, so salvaging what situation? There's no way you can really salvage after an outplay like that coming in from Iris, right? The, the matchup is set in stone. Unfortunately for Dyroth, he can't really do too much until he hits that first item. And yep. then we do see a potential turnaround because Iris opting to go for that Molten Essence. I don't know if he's going to complete the Cursed Helm, but he will need some armor to deal with the Dyroth. Despite the armor shred, you might as well mitigate that damage. Let's jump back into this and see how they play it out, though. Yep, and uh, as of yet, second total, gonna be honest play. RG already 1.8, Iris now bullying Neo out of lane, and he's almost a level two, almost two levels ahead of Neo to a certain degree. So Neo not having the most ideal situation. Easy turtle in the hands of RG and while Valen's gonna be forced to pop the go away to back off. He's getting a little bit of harassment. Aim is good, looking for the engagement of a style. Stormy with the heavy spin, but Lolios, he gets out, and the Nominum Blast connecting on Hawk is not gonna do any kind of damage. But Ling Aza from the sides, he's looking for it as well. He goes for the heavy spin, he isolates Aim, but no, Stormy, he has no choice to run the other direction. No. He turns the tide. He actually gets the kill onto his Leos. What an outplay coming from Orange's, but Izanami tries to salvage the situation, but no! The range is just gonna be enough. Izanami goes in for the stats. Now Orange's but in trouble. Subway from the sides will finally take him out, but Valence, he survives with one HP in the midst of it all. Neo will finally take down Hawk and RSGMY. They overextended and they got punished for it. Beautifully played by Stormy here. He makes the call, hey, we need to take out Hawk. He's the only person who can't take my su my sort of damage, especially since Izanami was on his way. He had very minimal time, and Link Aza already building tank items. It was optimal targeting coming in from Orange Esports, which won them that fight, which was about to turn terrible. Oh my goodness. But at the same time, that's going to be a little bit of redemption coming from Orange Esports. If he's been coming available, Link Aza. Getting a little bit feisty, he's got the mobility, but at the same time, Orange Esports, they took a very, very risky fight. Like, like you said as well, Stormy did really well, understanding that he needs to take out Hawk. But at the same time, Balance was so ballsy in that play early on. That's what you want to see, right? I mean, the members of Orange Esports know the extent of which they can actually fight. And the fact that they took this Tier 1 allows Balance to actually go up towards topside. Very traditional play coming in from Orange Esports. Look at the uh, what? use he is taking. What? As long as he is auto-attacking, he is able to get so much off of muddles here. Yeah, that's so much value because Iris now down to his 50% health. They are in a little bit of trouble. They want to take him out. Iris looking for Iris Abrazel. Not going to happen. Subway will take him out. Ling is a force to go for the heavy spin, but he will be able to get out Scott free. So that's going to be another tier 1 in the hands of Orange Esports up top. So a lot of value gained from this marksman. However, middle lane, RG, they want to do something about this, but I think it's a little bit too late. New Blast comes in on the flicker, connects on two, and now RSG, they have to back out. Lolio's getting kept in check, but they are able to keep them away as Izanami will fight back. Subway finally joins the fight, but the heals are coming in, but the damage from Balance is a little bit too much, and RSG MY, they lose two for one. Lovely layering coming in from Orange Esports, beautifully played, they wait for aim, Aim gets into position, he has the flicker, he knows he can catch all three of the members as RSG overextend, trying to greed out for this tier one, and now the punishment from Orange oh, Esports no, from Subway. Oh, Iris, he tries to go for the fight, but he's stuck, he doesn't have the Abrazer wrap in time, he doesn't have the sustains, they will take him out. The slaps coming from Izanami is starting to hurt a little bit more than I was, uh, I was expecting, but Orange Esports, they have to be worried about where Izanami's positioning a little bit more, because if you think about it, he's 3-1-0 and oh as of yet. Honestly, I, right at this stage of the game, it doesn't really matter, right? Orange Esports are taking objectives across the map, and when they have that sort of map control, they can immediately start punishing Link Aza, who's just power farming as much as he can, and eventually, he's not going to have a lot of relevance or need for this farm. He wants to kind of boost up Loliels, and more importantly, give that purple buff over to Izanami. So until then, Link Aza needs to take as much as he possibly can before Orange Esports will eventually overtake and start pulling the gold from his farm. Yeah, but 
RSG, as you can see, they're struggling a little bit, but they were able to trade a couple more. It seems like Middle Tower is going to be the way to go. They forced the Qs coming up with the Estes. RNG spots will gladly give it away, but they still have Ordell ultimates available. 25 seconds left before this next Lord, and that's going to be a little bit of housekeeping needs to be done coming from RNG and Y down bottom, but no, they re-engage. The Numenor Blood comes in. Iris dodges it, so that's a big ultimate beta from RNG Sports. Yep, and I don't think it's going to be back up, so my guess is, oh, the re-engagement. Oh, Iris, he could not get the taunting. Aza still gonna be there. They still have the sustains available. So it's gonna be a lot of peeling coming in. But the bigger picture is gonna be securing the Lord Page coming from RNG and Y. So they back off a little bit more. They have Iris in the front line to try and keep Neo in check. Aim gonna be going for a little bit of harassment, but from the sides, Izanami taking a little bit too much damage than expected. They have to concede this, but the Lord down to was 10%. They finally get it with the Frederick, but now with the heavy spin coming in, the models as well. Stormy is gonna be the first to fall for now. But RGMI, they come up on top, they still have the Lord and RGs, but they have to concede this knowing that it's a, a lost cause and AIM does not have the Numenon Blast to begin. Yeah, AIM trying to slow down the Lord take from RSGMY, almost losing his life in the process. The moment he flickers on Ada, there's no point getting back in. Collateral damage, or at the very least, walking into the range of the bad impact from Izanami could have costed him his life, and that would have been a two for nothing trade. But RSGMY, and as well as Orange Esports, just battling it out for this lead. Let's see how much of an advantage they're going to get off of this, because right now, Loliel's almost complete. Uh, almost complete with the Blade of Despair. Yeah, there's gonna be a tough defense coming in from Orange Esports, but as you can see, they're splitting off their attention. Valence gonna try and secure the Orange buff for himself instead, while the Lord is making move on the Tier 2. They're doing a pretty okay job, but Neo, he's forced to flicker out. He got pulled back from Sanguine Call. Iris is not able to chain the Taunt, but Orange Esports will be able to get away with this scot-free. This is... Again, well played by Orange Esports. They're purposefully using their ult. It feels like a waste, but it slows down the aggression from RSGMY. Now, notice that Lolios did decide to take Killing Spree, which does tell me that they're really reliant on Izanami for the later stages of the game, because Lolios, he's going to drop off because he doesn't have that weapon mastery to give him that extra bit of attack damage. So for now, RSGMY, this mid game is oh, all around oh, Lolios until Izanami is ready to go. Oh, for a second, I thought it was going to be a flank. Now, Ames is going to be reviewing position. They are going to force a fight from the back lines. Link Ames are going to isolating the fight, trying to go for the reset. Mundos is doing a fantastic job, but the rest of Orange Esports will get dived over the back lines as they force the issue. Neo's surviving with Nick of Hell, but buys enough time for the rest of Orange Esports to force the fight, and Hog gets completely caught off, and that's going to be a wipeout coming in from Orange Esports. Wow! Picking and choosing the fight, that was the keys to victory. Orange Esports force RSGMY into their own jungle, a choke point that they cannot escape from Muddles' auto attacks from Valens as he continues to press the advantage. And now look at that damage dealt. 72,000. He is over 30,000 more damage than his own teammate Stormy. And even more, uh, 33,000. Wait, sorry. 31,000 over Izanami. Yeah, you have to give credit to a Stormy. That Stormy's heavy spin steal to counter against RIG Mike, forcing them in the choke spot, allowing uh -oh. Valence to get free value damage. That is huge. Iris, however, he's not too happy about that play. He wants to turn the tides. However, it's going to be very difficult to do so. But props towards RNG spots. Blade of this bear purchase up on Subway, also with the dominance eyes on Neo means. This Estes is gonna start to fall off a little bit more in terms of sustains. Yeah, Estes, his positioning matters so much here. He only has the Purify, so he can't flicker out of tight spots. He, if he gets knocked out of position by Stormy, expect an instant pounce from the rest of Orange Esports. With the next Luminous Lord coming up in about two seconds or so, let's see how Orange Esports plays this oh, position. Oh no, the Mundo scouts them out, harasses RSGMY. They give away map control, but you can see the impact that Valence is bringing to the table as of yet. It's, just absolute lane control and zone control right now. Yep, especially when he does have the weakness finder. Anybody who's trying to chase Valence's down is going to struggle a little bit compared to Electro Flash. But let's see, Valence, he's done this before. He's trying to bait RSG MY to make the play, but aim conceal. He's walking to the top side. Oh, it's not worth it. Aim is going to be backing off. The rest of the teams are doing a little bit of housekeeping down bottom and middle. So RSG MY, they're not backing out yet. So they're going to try and force the issue. Meanwhile, Neo and Subway at the back line, they dive him. Um, they have Rolios, and Rolios is going to get taken down. That's going to be the big damage taken out of the equation. Numenum Blast will be baited out, but 
they've got their objective, and that is taking out Lolios from the get-go. Beautifully played by RNG Esports. They find the flank, they immediately take out Lolios. It, it, it feels like he was out of position, but RSG was trying to tell him, yeah, this is a safe space, you have nothing to worry about. Min Lee may have been pushed in, but there's no way that they're actually going to commence this attack. But RNG Esports had other plans. Now, with the 5k gold lead so far, Valens, even though he's 1-0 and 9 currently, probably has a full build by now. Yeah, that's a... He's almost level 50, so I'm pretty sure he's going to be full build for now, but he's doing a fantastic job just zoning. That's that's the beauty of the models, right? We've talked about it before, but the way Valens plays it is just on a different level. RGMY, they need to find a way to deal with this. Like you said as well, the Weakness Finder is kind of annoying. It feels like a Yeve slow to a certain degree, if you if you put a real world manipulation with the models, but now, RGMY, they need to find a way to utilize what... Uh, Iris is going to be able to do this because now with the Duminor Blast coming in, it's going to connect on Link Aza. They force the Heavy Speed in, but the inhibitor will fall because RNG is what they're swarming in. They oh. take down Iris. They go in for the finish, but at the same time, their health's a little bit too low as RNG MY wants to go in for a couple fights. Stormy finally re engaged. He will be forced to flicker out of there, forces the Heavy Spin, but Lolios will take it out with a torn apart of memory. So mistakes were made from RNG's board. Yeah, mistake made by Stormy, but an amazing defense coming out from Iza. Nami chunking out Valens from so far back in that fight, telling the rest of the Orange Esports members, hey, we gotta back off. The Corrosive Scythe now done by Valens. Let's look at his items. Yes, that is gonna be his fifth item. He has no completed boots. Neither does he need it. He just needs raw power. Well, question remains. Is he gonna sell the boots for a Hunter Strike or is he gonna complete the full shoe? Because as of yet, he is gonna be the main damage dealer coming from Orange Esports for RHEMY. However, beautiful stuff from the Leos, but I feel like, like you said as well, the backup plan is gotta be Izanami, and this next Lord fight down bottom is gonna be so important for RG and Y if they wanna bounce back. But as we get, RG spot is just so far ahead. I mean, they are, but the gold lead's not going to matter in about five minutes or so. So Orange Esports have to win off of this upcoming push. RGMY should be able to actually make it to the 42k mark if they stall for about 60 seconds or so after the Lord has spawned. But off of this Lord push, a 3.5k lead, and this is what I was talking about. Immediately, jungle resources being taken away by Orange Esports. And Link Aza, he's already maxed level. He wants to give the rest of his farm to his team. Oh my goodness, the harassment coming from Valens is just a little bit too much. Link Aza is just completely being bullied by Milo's in just, what, three different dashes? And he's, he's forced to back off. So the heals coming from Hawk is just not enough at this stage of the game. Well, for now, the fact that it took that long for Link Aza to actually be put down to 50% is a little concerning because imagine if this was Loli else, he would have instantly died yeah. with at least two, three auto attacks plus muddles. So keep that in mind as we get into this next fight. Orange Esports have really good fighting potential when it comes down to these tough choke points. So RSGMY must really pick and choose where exactly do they want to initiate. Well, interesting enough, from the side of Orange Esports, they swap out the purple buff and this time they give it up on Stormy. So. That's going to be a little bit more her uh, Valentina damage coming in from them. So they have to be a little bit careful. Subway doesn't seem to need the buffs. As Paquito has reached a stage where buffs is no longer necessary. Meanwhile, the Lord being baited out from Valens. RGMY, they know it's just not worth it. They want them to fight in the choke spot. But that is where Orange Esports excels and it's going to be hard to push out. But the model, look at this. Quick work on towards RGMY. Heavy spin finally forced out from the side of RGMY. They are going to try and force the fight. But they catch Valens. Valens down towards the last health. Can he get the slap? Yes, they do. They finally take him out. Is it not Iris now? In a little bit of trouble. He's going to get dived in. He needs to appraise the frag, but no! That's a good night. He won't die in the hands of Stormy. And now Stormy will pick the rest of the members of RGMY. They got the kill on Valens, but they lost their members. Beautifully done. Beautifully put done by Neo and as well as Stormy. And now they're looking to end this game right off of the bat. Oh no. Crystal's gonna be exposed. Izanami needs to go in for the wave player, but I think it's gonna be over as Orange Esports goes for the GG push. Game one in the back from Orange Esports. Nicely done coming in from Orange Esports. Tactical prowess coming out of them. And as the win conditions coming in for RGMI was almost met, Orange Esports puts a big full stop right at the end there. Nicely played.